Hello everybody, <laughs> welcome to Dark Shed Live. It's another day, another stream. We are on day five of the Printmas Advent Calendar. Thank you very much for joining for this impromptu session. If you're catching them live, I don't know how you're doing that. I'm not timing these at all. Uh, do you get notifications with Google? No, not Google, with YouTube when someone's gone live. I'm guessing that's how it's happening. If you are joining me live, welcome. Say hello in the chat. It's nice to know there are other people out there rather than me just standing here on my own talking to the camera. Talking of which, yesterday I was thinking about it. Like Tara was watching, she mentioned that she was broadcasting me on her TV, and Billy said he was watching me on a phone in America live. Now, I'm not a huge fan of technology, as you might have guessed from the sort of stuff I do. Um, but that's just an incredible thing, isn't it? To be able to me stand here in my shed doing some printing and people over the world watching me do it live. There are some good things in technology, I guess. So on to today's um, stream. Yes. Oh, first up, let's do today's shout out. Um, now, the person I'm shouting out today, I am doing because Oh, I haven't actually set it up yet. Hold on a second. Let's just see if I can do this live without dilly-dallying too much. Done. Right, so today's person um, that I'm going to shout out to is Dave Walker. Uh, I was chatting to him last night about yesterday's experiments with um, enlarging... Slide, I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> Slide film onto direct positive paper. Um, and he saw the stream and we had a little chat about it and potential improvements and stuff. Um, and that is what I'm going to be working on today because a few other people have been interested in the process as well. So I thought I'd do some more tests, try out some of the prints uh, with varying degrees of success. So Check out Dave's profile. He works on loads of stuff. He's a great photographer, um, but he's worked with like Steve Lloyd as well um, from Chroma on the uh, software behind uh, an Instax camera uh, with a custom shutter and lens, uh, which is just awesome. Um, so yeah, follow Dave. He's a great guy. Hi Dave, if you're watching. Um, so on to today then. So yesterday, let's just. What did we do? I printed this slide on direct positive paper, and there it is. There's the cow. Um, and it turned out pretty well. Um, unsurprisingly, it was very contrasty. Okay, so direct positive paper is pretty contrasty. And you're starting from slide film, which in itself can be quite contrasty. So I thought I'd try another image, <laughs> which was this one here which was a foolish mistake to go for because um that is an incredibly contrasty image like so th this waterfall uh, was in the philippines it's enormous it's incredible to experience to be there but as a photograph particularly on slide i made a mistake showing this on slide because it's a huge gorge and the lights coming in from the top of the sunlight and it's just catching the foliage at the top of the scene and hardly any gets down to the bottom. Um, so probably not the best type of film to be shooting on. I and I probably underexposed it as well looking at that. There's, there's no detail at all down the bottom. So when I went to try and uh, print that on the direct positive paper, let's see if I can just, if you can see this. So there are my test prints. Now this camera is showing things even more contrasty than things actually are in reality. Um, but still, the image is so contrasty. I tried doing a bit of dodging and burning on it, um, but I just couldn't get a balance at all. Um, so the, the image to center right, I managed to get the foliage on the right hand side of that image spot on, it looked really nice. Um, but as you can see, everything else is in darkness and the waterfall's completely blown out. So, and that, that's always going to be a problem with that, without, like, I'm dodging, I'm trying to dodge on, like, um, four by five paper as well. <sighs> Forget it. So I thought, right, I'm going to try a different image, <laughs> which was this one. Still a fairly contrasty image, but bar 
the silhouette of the tree, which there's no detail in anyway. There's a lovely graduation of light coming over the front. This was taken in uh, Australia somewhere, uh, somewhere in the Northern Territories. Um, I can't remember where. So this is, and this is where I'm at now. Now, one thing I was talking to Dave about was control and contrast. The direct positive paper, um, the di Peter Kemp's here. Hi, Peter. How's it going? <laughs> oh, by sheer chance. Excellent. Um, the direct positive paper. Uh, what was I talking about? It's not multigrade paper, right? So you can't use filters on it to control the contrast. Um, the only hope you've got, well, actually, we're discussing a couple of options. Uh, one is potentially using a different developer. So I occasionally mix up my own print developer. Um, for developing RC and FB not inverse paper, like normal photograph paper. Um, and you can control contrast that way. So that's something to try out. It involves mixing up chemicals. I haven't got time for that at the moment. Um, the other option with the direct positive paper is to pre-flash the paper. Now, Billy had been in touch with me recently about pre-flashing pre -flashing paper, normal paper, um, and why you would do it. And the main reason I do it is to get detail and highlights if if needs be with direct positive paper it's slightly different because you can reduce the contrast by pre pre flashing but your to calculate your pre flash it everything's reversed isn't it with direct positive so if you're burning an area in in direct positive paper you're actually making it lighter whereas in normal circumstances you're making the image darker one of these prints so this is where i'm at the moment hopefully i'm not going to drip water all over my mouse and everything today this is the first print i did okay it's let's just make this full screen this is the first print i did um fairly contrasty um as you can see the highlighted areas here are just white and then it just pretty much drops off to black okay but in this middle area here, it's really nice. There's a bit of contrast there, so it's, it's showing potential. So I increased the exposure time here. I actually added a stop by doubling the time for this one. And I'm starting to get the detail out in this area here, okay? But it's still very contrasty. Now, without doing some crazy sort of dodging here and in the sky to try and get a balance between those two, um, I'm struggling a bit. So the process of uh, pre-flashing is you do a test strip without I did it in my enlarger you can use a flash you can use normal light but you do a test strip where you're adding more light and instead of like say normal darkroom paper it getting darker when you do that it actually gets lighter okay with the inverse paper so this is the first one I did it changed like that's with no light on it so you can see it's perfectly black that was the first step and that's quite a big jump so what you're looking for is a small jump and then you go back a step and that's how much you pre-flash by. So here you can see this is the next one I did which the timings for that were basically between those two. So that's the same as that. And it turned at this step. Okay. So what I did, it might have been the next step actually. Anyway, I ended up doing two seconds pre-flash. That t those timings are going to be completely dependent on your setup. I'd closed my aperture down on my lens. All I've done is I took the negative carrier out so it was exposing the light and I used the enlarger time on that. It ended up as two seconds pre-flash. Okay. So then I did that exposure time. Okay. With the two second pre-flash. And I got this image here. So hopefully you can see how it's brought the detail out in this corner now. Okay, so it's exactly the same exposure time plus the pre-flash. Okay, and the other thing that it's done is it's hugely reduced the contrast. So I'm actually getting some, some tonal variations within, within the grasses here, which is, is lovely because that's the beauty of this image. It's like a lovely soft spread, soft spread of light over, over the foreground here. So this is all good. I'm, I'm blowing out there and the sky quite significantly. You might be able to see in this one, there's a, nice, there's a bit of like 
It's not vignetting, but um, as the sun's rising, it's a lot darker in the sky here. So you get a lovely graduation in the sky, and that's just completely gone. It's like the sun's here in this image. So what I'm going to do now live is demo this, but actually dodge this area here to try and get some detail back into those areas. This here, the exposure, I would say, is pretty much spot on. I might, I might add another quarter of a stop to the whole image and then dodge that back down to be more like this. Um, so yeah, there we go, and here we go. If you have any questions, as always, um, drop them in the chat. Hi Pete. Um, then, or in the comments, and I will get back to you. <laughs> Right, that's on. Let's turn the lights out. Hopefully, everything will kick in. Oh, I haven't put my. Uh, I suppose this doesn't matter too much today. Let's put it on anyway. Is it going to stay on? For some reason, this. HDMI connection to this camera. It just likes to reset. Oh, that's not going to play ball today. That nah, doesn't matter anyway. Right, let's um, go to multicam. You'll have to. Let's just turn this one. Ramp the ISO right up on this so you can see what's going on, hopefully. Um, right, so I've pre-flashed some paper already. You can't, you can't pre-flash all your paper and just leave it. You have to use it fairly shortly. I don't know exactly how long um, after pre-flashing it. So I'm going to add another quarter of a stop just to get that corner nice, bring it out a bit more. Okay, and we get that in, and ah, it's such a small print, this. Um, oh, I think I've dropped my... Dodging implement. Oh, well, I'll just do it with my thumb. So I've got the whole top corner to drop, um, drop, dodge, and then I'll drop, dodge the... Uh, I keep saying drop instead of dodge. Um, and I'm going to do that for, how long should I do that for? Probably two seconds. The amount of time that it was pre-flashed for. So here we go. Fiber paper, longer development time, about two minutes go on there. So was there anything else to do with this I wanted to mention while it's developing? Um, other than that I really like the look of the images. <laughs> they, um, they're, they're really unique. Um, I guess because you're putting it through slide film and then onto this this paper type, it's a very unique look, and you like you've just got to like with really contrasty scenes, it's just not going to work um, particularly well. But like the cow I did yesterday, that was fairly evenly lit. Um, so it was, it worked pretty well. I was, I was quite lucky choosing that one first off, I think. Oh, it's looking good. Probably could have dodged for a bit longer actually in the sky. Um, so 
so you kind of you've really got to think about if you if you were just to shoot like this you've got to really think about the images that at the start and what you're capturing and getting that exposure right um for the slide film so then at least you've got a chance when it comes to this part I dodged that for longer. So as I was saying, positive paper. So dodging it will actually make it darker, not lighter. There we go. Uh, the other thing we were discussing with Dave was uh, Dave mentioned um, potentially using a film developer rather than a print developer. Give that a go and see what what sort of results you get. Um, and the fix. I'm just going to get a sheet of perspex. So as always, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at The Dark Shed. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then please like and subscribe the video. Yeah, okay, there's a minute in the fix. That's two minutes in total. Turn the lights on after a minute. Now let me show you this while that's still fixing. I've got a... Uh... Oh, I should have just ripped. Not that it matters. So when you're doing pre-flashing, it's all, all dependent on what setup you're using. Um, so if you're using your enlarger, um, it will depend on how far away the head is, what lens you've got in, what aperture you've got it set to, all that stuff. Here's a test of, um, that's blowing out, isn't it? Uh, for normal photographic paper doing a pre-flash and so you, you, this one here it, like, it was just starting to go dark at this step so you pre-flash to that step and that's done the video seems to be messing up for some reason today awesome Is that working? Poor video, apparently. Poor video. <laughs> you know what, that extra quarter of a stop. I've possibly messed it up. show you this there we go so loads better than the last one um, regards like where the sun is blowing it out actually that's not too bad it might dry a bit darker as you can see the comparison between two nice big spotlight on them so the one on your left is the latest one an extra quarter of a stop with the dodging of the sky. It's not coming through very well for you, but there is actually a bit of that kind of sky darkening going on in the top right. Um, might have been a bit too much adding that quarter. Just not, I'd, I'd, I'd like it to be a bit dark in that bottom right hand corner, but still very happy with it. Now 
Peter's saying it's gone a bit laggy as well. What is going on today? Right, well on that note I will stop streaming because uh, what's the point if it's dropping out? <laughs> I shall see you all tomorrow for day six. Don't forget, you can subscribe to my quarterly zine. It's the launch issue just gone out, um, which helps support my work and the streams and lots of stuff I do. So any support is greatly appreciated. See you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye.